This conference will now be recorded. Thank you so very much, ma'am, for recording our session. Okay, Umair has joined. So guys, thank you so much for joining once again. The topic which we are doing is VXLAN, which stands for Virtual Extensible Local Area Network. This topic indeed is very, very important topic. This topic is not dominated by only one single vendor. Today, all the vendors into the field of networking, they are using. In fact, we will be focusing our VXLAN study knowledge and configuration lab on our dear vendor called Cisco. You know what? Today, I got a call. I got a call for connecting the excellent topic for the purpose of another vendor called Juniper. Yeah, and you know what? My friend Vikram is working day in and day out with VMware and even the VMware network virtualization called NSX. Say V or you can call it as NSXT, the latest version. They do have the inclusion of VXLAN. So this particular topic called virtual extensible local area network is indeed a very, very important topic. Now, in this particular topic, we people will be discussing about the complete theory. We will be talking about the deep dive of this particular topic from the point of view of the wire shark capture we will be checking the frame format and the contents of this particular technology and once we are done with understanding complete traffic flow the understanding of the terminologies then we will be doing one extensive lab for this particular topic the extensive lab as i mentioned will have two spine switches four leaf switches three servers and one traditional layer three device router or a switch. So let us start this particular topic called VXLAN. Before starting and in the topic, the contents which we are going to discuss about, first of all, first and foremost thing is we are going to talk about the topology. Let me tell you, before even understanding the topology, we will be understanding the history of the topology number here we need to discuss about what is underlay what is overlay what are the different kinds of overlays understanding overlay based data centers various types of overlay in our data center very very important then we will be talking about what is vxlan the important terminologies covered in VXLAN and VXLAN deployment modes. Of course, while talking about the terminologies, we will be talking about the Wireshark capture of a VXLAN packet. We will be deciphering it. We will be dissecting it to look at into the content of each and every header in the VXLAN packet. And then, of course, we will be learning the VXLAN content and what as an anatomy, what constitute a legitimate VXLAN packet, right? And finally, the deployment. And then on, we will be talking about a beautiful lab wherein we will be using our multi-protocol BGP with the address family L2VPN EVPN and this is nothing but this is what the whole industry is deploying VXLAN with. Okay, just after introduction. First of all, the topology and a brief about the history. My dear friends, the VXLAN see sounds to us a pretty new technology, but the topology of connectivity between the devices wherein we do call devices as spine switches and the leaf switches is very old. Well, it was invented, the topology was invented, developed, designed by Mr. Edson 
Irving in the year 1938, which was then formalized by Mr. Charles Claus in the year 1953, right? And used by the Bell Telephone Company at that time for the purpose of providing circuit switching network. And the beauty of this particular topology, which was not considered by us during the initial phase is a absolutely a loop free topology. So the very first thing is, as we have learned it very well, our traditional kind of networks, what we go for, there is a layer two loop always when we connect. Why layer two loop occurs? For example, if they are connected in a traditional setup, then the connectivity will be established over here. For example, three switches. What traditionally we do, we do connect these three switches in this way. So when the classical switches, they do get connected in this way, you know what happens? We do remember a lady called Radia Perlman who developed a beautiful protocol called spanning tree protocol. Because the spanning tree protocol will simply get involved over here to make one particular switch as a root bridge and to block the port in order to avoid the layer two loops. But in VXLAN, by the virtue of the topology, there is no chance to have any layer two loop. Why is it so? This topology is based on connectivity between two layered devices. One upper layer devices are known as spine switches. You can see it's written spine switches and bottom layer devices are known as leaf switches. My dear friends, here we don't have anything related to our traditional terminology is called core distribution and access layer. We just simply call it to be as spine and leaf architecture. The beauty of this particular connectivity is all the spine switches, they are connected to all the leaf switches and vice versa. But there is no spine to spine connectivity and no leaf to leaf connectivity. And by the virtue of this simple connectivity, we just simply avoid any kind of layer two loop. Well, this is about the topology. And by the name of gentleman, Charles Claus, in the year 1953, who formalized this particular topology, is known as also known as clause architecture but commonly well known to us is called leaf and spine topology which in itself is meaningful okay if i clean this here you can see how they are connected this topology besides their connectivity also gives us one significant benefit that is called ECMP equal cost multipathing for both unicast and multicast. We will be going and taking a deep dive into what causes ECMP. It is not the topology, but of course certain protocols, certain arrangement inside the VXLAN packet that provides us this particular empowerment to equally distribute the traffic onto all the available link that's called equal cost multipathing. When you have multipath, you can distribute the traffic over to them. Okay, we will definitely be coming over to ECMP in detail. But quickly, as we all know, let us quickly understand two important terminologies. One is underlay because VXLAN, what we are talking about, dear friends, it is an overlay technology. 
overlay can be put as an analogous to a tunneling mechanism. Now, for the purpose of any tunnel creation, for the purpose of setting up any overlay, what do we need? We need a underlay setup to be ready. So, first of all, we may need to make sure that there is underlay which is duly configured. And you know what? In the lab, you will happen to see that we need to make sure that there is a besides layer 3 connectivity, we will be using a underlay routing protocol called OSPF. So there are certain prerequisites in order to configure VXLAN. Layer 3 routing protocol is one of the prerequisite. Okay, which we know well. When it comes to underlay, let us understand the terminologies, underlay terminologies, which we normally use. In case of an underlay network, the devices with which our servers, maybe virtual servers or physical servers are connected to those devices as per underlay or as per classical network, they are known as edge devices. The segment in which they are connected are the segment is known as LAN segment. And the connectivity is, of course, based on the IP interfaces. Of course, as I said, you need to run a layer 3 routing protocol to ensure the reachability of all the devices, which will suffice to the need of having underlay. Guys. Let us not make it unilateral. In case if you have any question, you can definitely ask in between. Okay, but <clears throat> but once underlay is set up, that is also going to be our prerequisite in the lab to get our underlay ready with the other prerequisites like multicast, etc. Okay, that's a beautiful point. Multicast. You know what? The day two or day three, I will just give a pause to VXLAN. You know why? Because we need to dedicate ourselves at least a day to refresh our knowledge with regards to multicast. And of course, the usage of multicast in VXLAN. What is that usage? That is to understand what is PIM bidirectional and that too using the rendezvous point wherein we have two variants. One rendezvous point is known as phantom and other rendezvous point is known as any cast rendezvous point. So guys, I will be giving a pause to VXLAN on day two or say day three. But we'll make sure before stepping into the lab, we will understand the basic important concept of multicast with and in conjunction with VXLAN. Okay, nothing blank we are going to do. <clears throat> That's what our holistic motor is. Now, guys. This particular slide with the lucky number seven, it is really very important. And why? Because I need to remove this lucky number seven slide from the presentation mode. Why is it so? To explain you three different kinds of overlays. One is known as network, number one. Number two overlay is called host overlay and number three overlay is called hybrid overlay. So <clears throat> why is it so? Because by removing it from the presentation mode, I can zoom it up and 
can show you certain microscopically written words over here so let us one quick thing let me discard it now first of all network overlay let us zoom it and bring it more closer to us okay now you can see what is written over here <clears throat> and a wider picture what do we see is we can see over here the overlay being constructed where the overlay what devices are participating in the formation of overlay dear friends we have got our vtap devices forget about vtap right it is the terminology a specific terminology to be used and i will explain you what are vtaps on the leaf switches the devices over here they are our physical devices the switches to be used over here they are our physical switches by the virtue of configuration which we'll do we will establish switch to switch overlay using vxlan point to be taken when we configure vxlan overlay over the physical switches at both the ends you know what then we call it as network overlay right point taken now we go to our host overlay in case of host overlay what we have done the tunnel end point vxlan tunnel end point and starting point they are not on the physical switches in fact we have bypassed them then the question comes is where exactly are they my dear friends you can see the tunnel begin and tunnel end point they are there on a device mentioned over here as hypervisor what is this hypervisor hypervisor is nothing but it is a virtual platform for the purpose of virtualizing the server hypervisor is not actually the tunnel begin or end point there is a virtual switch which is deployed on top of the hypervisor which commonly is known as virtual distributed switch or virtual standard switch the detail of virtual distributed switch the detail of virtual standard switch comes in our dedicated topic called application centric infrastructure wherein we do understand how to virtualize our network don't worry in our lab we will not be setting up our so called host overlay why we are calling it host because these hypervisors they are known as host hope it's making sense hope i'm glow i'm going at a decent speed neither too fast nor too slow but in case if you have any doubt truly speaking i would love to address your doubts uh ashish we are speaking about msx right here something like msx yes yes vikram i'm talking about you are absolutely right i'm talking about vmware's virtualization of the network with the help of vmware's technology called nsx where in you are the master of where in we do use our virtual distributed switch on two different ends to create vxlan overlay tunnel okay so this is our host overlay now we come down ah uh, and uh, now no 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 we need to come to hybrid overlay where is hybrid overlay it's here now i need to zoom it up now dear friends kindly take a look 
the tunnel begin and tunnel end points are different. While on the left hand side, our tunnel begin point is a virtual machine or not a virtual machine, virtual switch. However, the other end of the tunnel is a physical box. That is a physical switch. When we create our VXLAN overlay tunnel in between the virtual switch on the one side and physical switch on the other side, we call it as Chetan Chaudhary has left. Okay, fine. We call it as, you know what? Hybrid overlay. Hybrid, a mix of host overlay and the network overlay is known as hybrid overlay. So you can see left hand side, we have got hypervisor. Definitely we have got virtual switch on top of hypervisor from where we are starting our tunnel. On the right hand side, we have our hardware leaf switch. Called as VTAP. I'm going to tell you what is VTAP. Okay. Yes, I should if any, please, it's my honor. Go ahead. Arun. So, yeah. Can I go ahead? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Is it recording? Yeah. So, basically, uh, what I understood is that. Uh, Within a data center, we are just uh, creating tunnel between uh, one for like for example one two meter you your saying right. So is it kind of an edge three device or uh, so what what should be uh, this meter? And uh, my question is that uh, so basically what is the purpose of the tunnel? Are we extending VLAN from one source to another source? So, Very good question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Arun, your question has two parts. First part is what is this VTAP device? Answer to this question is in case of a Cisco, mm -hmm. VTAP devices are certain specific Nexus switches. For example, minimum a device, a Cisco switch which is qualified to be configured as a VTAP device where for the purpose of VXLAN is Nexus 5600 switch. Second option, Nexus 7000 switch, but with F3 line card. Third option, Nexus 9000 series switch. Definitely, we are not constrained about the line card. All the interfaces, they do support. Number one, this is about the hardware device. In our lab, we will be using Nexus 9000 switch for the purpose of VXLAN configuration. This is with regards to Cisco. But as I said, VXLAN is not Cisco specific technology. It is an industry standard technology. So all the vendors, right? Say Juniper, as I was telling you, Juniper has its own range of switches which does which do support VXLAN. So that particular data sheet I don't have, but it is definitely available. And when I said hypervisor, right, that is called virtual distributed switch, which we will be discussing in detail in our topic called application centric infrastructure, wherein I will tell you what is the virtual distributed switch, how the virtual networking happens, and all those stuff. Okay, okay. And then uh, there was a second part of your question. I think I missed. Uh, Arun, what was the second part of your question? So I was just asking, what is the purpose of the tunnel? Are these for extending the VLAN from one source to okay. another? Yes. Yes. Well, absolutely. The purpose of VXLAN is extending VLAN, and a very simple and short and crispy answer, if you can understand. V motion to provide availability of virtual machine mobility 
called B motion. In our lab, we will see this. When you will take a deep dive into it, you will see all the components providing the B motion. This is a question which requires more detailed description of it. <clears throat> okay, Arun, does it suffice to your questions? So, yeah. So basically, what I understood that uh, we can uh, extend our VLAN over uh, an IP network within a data center, right? Absolutely. Which means what? One specific VLAN you can have, say, with this particular switch. The same VLAN you can have with this particular switch, and all. I will give you complete details of it, and I'm sure you will get a absolute clarity and that too when you will do that hands on. Okay. Uh, hi, Ashish Shekhar Desai. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Shekhar, I can hear you. Go ahead, Shekhar. Okay. So uh, just to under uh, just to understand uh, this uh, topology that you're uh, you're sharing with us, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if I summarize this one, so you mean to say, first of all, we need to build a layer three setup, okay? According to you means like we have to uh, we have to set up that spine and leaf switches, okay? And uh, on top of this, we have to run some protocols to reach the uh, like for the reachability, like to the outside world. Okay. And then on top of this, we are just connecting any of the, like, uh, like suppose we have a, we have a server, right? Like blade server and rack servers, right? And on top of this, you are running VMware, right? VMware NXS, NSX. Okay. And uh, for the virtualizations, uh, like suppose uh, we are having some uh, servers, okay, and we have a centralized centralized uh, storage, right? So all the all the server will be the host and the IP, the the sorry uh, the server's gateway will be the and uh, the leaf switches, okay? You mean to say what I'm trying to what I understand from you? And uh, if suppose if suppose one of the one of the uh, one of the rack server or uh, blade servers goes down. So the if you have already configured that V motion, so it will automatically replicate that machine into the another machine, another blade server by using V motion service, V motion, and uh, the the extension of the VLANs is uh, taken care by VXLAN, right? What I understand. Yes. You. You have understood it absolutely correct, Shekhar. Mm -hmm. And you have given the complete description of the devices to be used in data center, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. To understand what you said for everyone, it is important to understand the placement of those devices because you spoke about rack servers, plate servers, storage devices, etc. One first point which you said is also correct. That is about the VXLAN. Here, the VXLAN topology connectivity, what I'm showing you is within a data center. But VXLAN is, yeah, but VXLAN is scalable across multiple data centers as well for the purpose of data center interconnection called DCI. Well, once VX, you are done with VXLAN, mm -hmm. there is a third topic called Cisco Application Centric Infrastructure. In Cisco oh. Application Centric Infrastructure, this mm -hmm. particular statement of yours applies because VXLAN will be used to connect the pods or the sites across different data centers. So that is also there. Yeah, you uh, okay. probably wanted to ask. So, uh, uh, suppose uh, like we have a different, different, uh, uh, like we have a DR and DC, right? And if you, if I want to move one of my host machine from my one of my blade servers, so this can be done by the leaf and spine connectivity 
according to the leaf and spine connectivity and we should have a multi multi what what is called that multi site something on the multi site yes. yeah yeah okay absolutely but actually i just wanted to understand this uh, this uh, overlay network overlay and uh, host overlay and hybrid overlay again if you can for me why not <laughs> yeah thank why you. not definitely so guys let's take a look on our host overlay and our hybrid overlay this network overlay i believe is clear to you guys over here the devices in case of network overlay these all devices these are the physical switches in case of host overlay we do not want to configure vxlan tunnels on the physical switches these are all physical switches but we don't want to configure vxlan tunnel on them host overlay says that you can configure vxlan also on the vmbs terminology called vds virtual distributed switch if you have idea about nsx what is a virtual distributed switch you can immediately understand otherwise i'll say please wait we have a detailed discussion about the virtual distributed switch and the virtual networking with the help of virtual distributed switch just you can say that this is just like the same switch providing same purpose but in a virtual environment right this is called our host overlay in case of hybrid overlay where on the one end of the tunnel you have a physical switch but the other end of the tunnel you have virtual distributed switch so when the vxlan tunnel is formed between physical switch at one end and a virtual switch at the other end this is known as hybrid because hybrid is nothing but a combination of network overlay and the host overlay so this switch comes here okay and this hypervisor comes over here forms a virtual overlay uh, sorry hybrid overlay hmm? uh, Ayesh, uh, <clears throat> so uh, here in this again so i understand this host overlay like you have uh, encapsulation and decapsulation happens within your uh, esxi that is in the tip which is running on your esxi right so uh, I, I understand the use case of it of this host overlay but uh, hybrid overlay i don't get the use case so uh, how this encapsulation and decapsulation works see uh, so i have a vm which is running in in the hypervisor say for example you have two hypervisors one of the hypervisor i have a vm running and i have a vn id assigned to it and uh, and it's l2 over l3 right so so uh, a packet is being sent uh, to uh, a vm which is running on the same vni right i mean i'm saying uh, l2 i'm saying l2 it's not l3 so uh, a vm1 sending a packet to vm2 which is in the same vni right uh, so uh, the 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 uh, i mean if it is in the in the in the in the, in the hypervisor 2 right okay it will go and uh, you know it's done but if that vm try to send a uh, uh, a packet to uh, some other uh, vlan based vm or uh, you can say a bare metal right so how this encapsulation or decapsulation works so how it's been sent to this bare metal servers you're getting my point what i'm trying to say okay i am getting your point but this needs a detailed diagrammatic explanation of it and so i would like to park your question 101 as you know we always do it 101 I will draw the diagram, detailed diagram, and will show you. 
Okay. Sure. Right. Yeah, I'm no going to park this particular question because I know that other friends of ours who do not have a handsome knowledge of NSX as you have, they will feel themselves isolated. Sure. No okay. Mohan, you have put yourself on unmute. Yeah. Probably you want to ask. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. Actually, I have a question. Like, uh, so the host overlay. So the host by image means it can be only a host system, or by definition, it can be any virtual system. Uh, Mohan, dear friend, uh, some disturbance in the voice. Is it possible you can uh, mitigate the disturbance so that I can hear you properly? What about now? Am I audible? No, it's, it looks better. It looks better. Go ahead, Mohan. Okay, great. So in the host overlay, so we're doing the uh, maybe the tunnel forming between the two hosts, which are uh, having the ETEP. So by which it's only like <clears throat> it can be a host system, maybe a virtual machine, or it can be any virtual machine. Like see an example, like it can be a virtual switch, or it can be a virtual router, or it can be uh, any device which works. It's in virtual form. Not any device in a virtual form. The device need to be capable for the VXLAN configuration. Okay. For example, for example, Cisco provides us a virtual switch as well called Nexus 1000V. This virtual Correct. switch is not at all capable, is not at all capable for any layer 3 functionality. Forget about VXLAN. But okay. at the same time, VMware provides us a virtual distributed switch or virtual switch called virtual distributed switch in the VMware network virtualization technology called NSX V or you can call NSX T the latest version there the switch is capable so okay it means like a uh, virtual uh, machine which is capable with uh, weak slam can be uh, used for uh, making this post overlay right yes Mohan it is not okay. only specific capable virtual switch the same applies with the same principle applies with the switch also all the switches okay. they do not support the vxlan configuration so okay. that's the reason i told you about cisco only nexus 5600 nexus nexus 5600 nexus 7k but with f3 line card nexus 9k other okay. switches did not support right so okay got it thank you switch specific okay all right another friend of mine has joined marvin thank you so much marvin for joining and hope guys no more questions okay but you're always welcome <clears throat> so what happens when we are creating an overlay the terminologies they get changed earlier this particular switch in our underlay setup where we were calling this switch as our edge device now for the purpose of vxlan by the virtue of the configuration so done on the switch we call it as vtap device what does this vtap stands for it stands for vxlan tunnel and point the name in itself is very intuitive the technology is vxlan the purpose is the feature of this device based on the configuration is a tunneling feature and this is the last point of our tunnel all the devices where in we do perform we do configure the vx lan configuration all these devices are known as vx lan tunnel endpoints which simply signifies one simple concept that there is, is going to be tunnel between all these devices point number one this particular segment you can call this segment as a LAN segment. 
you can also call this particular segment as VX LAN segment. I'll tell you in our next classes what is the difference between LAN segment and VX LAN segment. How do we make sure that this segment becomes a VX LAN segment? What configurations make sure that this segment becomes a VX LAN segment? Now, the servers at the bottom, downstream devices, they can either be virtual servers or they can be physical servers. In normal industry standard way, we call physical servers as bare metal host servers. The virtual servers are known as virtual machines. Okay. More terminologies are going to come. Yes, as I said, there will be tunnel encapsulation. All these devices, VTAP devices, they will be creating end-to-end -end tunnels with other VTAP devices. And this will happen by the virtue of our configuration. Okay. So this is the holistic picture of our connectivity we have just seen that these devices at the upper layer these are called spine switches and these devices are called leaf switches vxlan stands for virtual extensible local area network here in short we call it as vxlan you can say that it should be ve plan no we that's the reason when we write it we write x in an uppercase and e in a lowercase just to specify that we are talking about it it is a layer 2 tunnel over layer 3 in layer 3 tunnel which means what which simply means at this connectivity level this needs to be an IP connectivity. This is going to create our underlay as we discussed about using our lovely routing protocols. OSPF is an industry standard. So we will be using OSPF and you will see in 100% cases for the purpose of underlay. Everyone, everywhere we are using OSPF. We also call it an Ethernet in UDP header. Now, why we call it Ethernet in UDP? I will show you the frame format there. In from the frame format, you yourself will call. Oh, we are encapsulating our original Ethernet packet with the UDP header. My dear friends, this particular protocol, user datagram protocol, we know this particular protocol very well. This is the protocol which is going to provide a beautiful feature to VXLAN and I am just keeping it blank for you guys to think. It is similar to OTV overlay transport virtualization of Cisco's fine absolutely no problem but OTV is no more in discussion with us right now. Cisco even has obsolete has declared it to be an obsolete technology we will be talking about during our discussion about rfc 7348 and rfc 7432 wherein we have explained the concept of vxlan rfc 7432 is to include mp bgp using an address family called L2 VPN, eVPN as an enhancement for VXLAN for the purpose of both control plane learning as well as data plane learning. Learning is the keyword over here. Right. We will be seeing a significant role of eVPN for the purpose of preparing NLRI that is called network layer reachability information. What it is, it is a table. Okay. As I just discussed, question being asked, 
the switches which do support being mentioned over here okay now something more about vxlan to understand it vxlan is different from vlan why vxlan was introduced because we do say number one today there is a buzzword what is that every everyone is talking about this everyone is talking about what cloud i am not going to talk about cloud over here but let me tell you if you understand the concept very easily very simply by using term cloud then let me tell you that this particular protocol this particular technology is a cloud based technology but it is not only the cloud based technology it is also the intra data center technology also okay now when i'm saying cloud based means everywhere anywhere you can go to go move out anywhere you know okay i really don't want to confuse you by telling that vx plan is highly what is this happening why 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 okay back on to it okay the vx lan as against vlan where vlan just provide us a maximum of 4096 identifiers vx lan is capable to provide us 16 million 777 216 identifiers which means number one point this is there to provide the highest scalability to, to to our local area network how it happens definitely we have a lot of discussions on it day one i cannot explain you how vxlan is so scalable just we need to understand by the virtue of availability of 24 bits in vxlan header to raised to power 24 gives us this particular value in simple we call it as approximately 17 million ids and you know what these ids are called with a small and very sweet name called vn id vxlan network identifier a law is clear to multi pathing we have seen e c m p and i gave you one question to think that how this e c m p happens in my last theory session on vx lan before moving over to the lab we will be checking who provides e c m p facility to vx lan doesn't need spanning tree protocol layer to a uh, prevention mechanism etc by the virtue of these highly scalable identifiers called vn ids you know we provide a beautiful functionality called multi tenancy multi tenancy means what this means that where in we do have for example right let's take the example of amazon web services which everyone knows which has got two office tenants called pepsi and coke pepsi wants to use a vlan number say 14 and coke also wants to use the same vlan number 14 amazon web services is going to say all right no problem you use it i will take care of internal communication so that these common vlan ids they should not clash how this is done through the mapping process okay all going in a theory way but it is all practical so guys a quick recap of what we did discuss about i'm sure by this time 
you know what is underlay what is overlay what is vx lan of course not in detail unless until you conclude this entire topic with hands on onto the lab what is vnid vnid is nothing but similar to analogous to vlan id but vlan id where it ends to 4096 vn ids they are from 1 to 16 million 777216 these many ids vtap the tunnel endpoints you know that they can be physical they can be virtual now nve this is the terminology network virtual endpoint these are nothing but these are actually the interfaces All right where these interfaces are there these interfaces are configured on the device called vtap device say if we have this vtap device for this vtap device to talk to a vtap device we need an interface that interface need to be a virtual interface and we explain call this interface as network virtual endpoint and we configure this interface as int nve say one and then whatever configurations are required those configurations are inserted in the interface okay in the course of our lab configuration we will be interacting configuring this interface significantly now finally two terminologies let me tell you guys these two terminologies are absolutely similar to each other why my pen is behaving like this drawing unnecessary when I'm moving without touching okay these two terminologies are absolutely similar with the difference that this particular terminology is applicable to a specific type of cisco switch called nexus 7k and this is called vn segment this is the same thing but we do call for cisco we call vn segment with regards to nexus 9k nexus 50 600 switches okay so what exactly is this the segment the segment where we do have our and host connected to but which requires vx lan tunneling and thus the endpoints having their connectivity known to them to vlan and then they get mapped to vn id the segment where this mapping happens that segment is known as vs vx lan network segment in short sweet crispy we call it as vn segment when it comes to nexus 7000 switches we do the same configuration but by calling them as bridge domain since we will be doing our configuration on nexus 9000 switches so we will be using terminology called vn segment and not bridge domain uh, ashish you are saying that vn segment is the vn id no it is the segment where vlan ids are mapped to vn id vn id is a number vlan is a number the segment uh nickel said drop okay fine no problem nickel catch you the segment where they are mapped that segment is known as that segment is known as vn segment you will better understand this when we will do the configuration because vn segment has his own identifier 
Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, just to yes. know that uh, so that bridge domain will work only on Nexus 9K device and VN segment will work on Nexus 9K. You mean to say? Yes. From configuration point of view, conceptual okay. point of view, they are same. Okay. Okay. And my dear friend Shekhar, in case if you have something called, if you have gone through and something called ACI in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Where we all use the, the same terminology, please do not match it with exactly. the bridge domain. What we, yes, I, I read it from your mind. Please do not confuse this, call this bridge domain as the one we do study in application centric infrastructure. <laughs> yeah, because we have a same AC infrastructure and uh, we are having Nexus 9K and uh, we also created that bit for, for multiple uh, different different subnets and in the same tenant. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, bridge to domain is something we will be configuring extensively in application centric infrastructure, but that is a different bridge domain. I don't know why Cisco used uh, BD in this on Nexus 7000 configuration of a VSET, VN segment. All right. Okay. Good, Shekhar. Uh, I was expecting. I have a question like, uh, so what is the uh, hmm. difference between the VT, EP, and the uh, ME? Because both are uh, actually like somewhat sound similar to me. Is there any difference uh, to differentiate them? Uh, okay, I missed something. Uh, you are asking difference between what? Uh, VTEP and NVE. That is weak and uh, tunnel endpoint and uh, network virtual tunnel endpoint. All right, very good question. Thank you so much, Mohan. Yes, my dear friends, please do not accept unless and until your each and every doubt gets solved. Good question. So let me tell you, this is nothing but very simple. This is nothing but this is talking about the device. When we say VTAP, when we say NVE, this is nothing but this is talking about the interface. And where this interface, this interface is there on this particular device. The interface on VTAP, from where we create a VXLAN tunnel, that interface is known as NVE interface. VXLAN network virtual endpoint. Mohan, does it yeah, answer your question, my friend? That's right, you so much. Point. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. The courage of asking a question yes i do understand as myself if i put you myself in your shoes you really need to have a courage to ask very good question any other question guys if you have in between all right no worries we'll keep going on slowly and slowly underlay and overlay we have already discussed right now we know very well what is underlay what is overlay we now know what are various devices underlay as we uh, yes yes ashish i have a question regarding that. yeah ashish uh, it's not for the topic actually it's out of the topic actually i just wanted to know that uh, actually i have a session uh, with the other client okay so i just wanted to know how long this uh, session will continue i'm planning to wrap up this session in another 10 minutes Oh, okay, cool, cool. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Okay, if you want to continue, you can continue. If you want to drop, you can drop and we can get in touch. I hope uh, you are already there in my WhatsApp. Yeah, so you yeah. can ping me there. And okay. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Bye-bye. No problem. You are welcome. You are very well welcome. Ashish, I have a question. 
Yes, Nikhil. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Please go ahead, Umair. Yes, I have a question regarding the bridge domain. As you told uh, us that uh, mm -hmm. the bridge domain in ACI is different and as in VXLAN. So, so I have to understand the uh, basic difference between both of the, both of the bridge domains. And the second one is that, as I understand, the in bridge domain is basically a uh, uh, define a flood broadcast domain, and where you can map multiple VLAN in bridge domain. And the same work uh, we are doing uh, ACI, uh, where we have defined the subnets and we have defined um, uh, subnet of different VLANs, and same we do in in VXLAN. So how you can say that in both are di in different? Okay, good question. So Umer, back on to our previous slide. Uh, oh, why it's not going back? Okay. But I was talking about one point is very well clear that bridge domain in VXLAN is nothing but it is talking about the VX, VXLAN network segment. And when we use terminology called bridge domain, bridge domain, yes, indeed, it in ACI, right? It is a location where, do, where we do configure our gateways gateways and we call it as a gateway subnet it is the location where our virtual machines are connected to but you know the same thing yes the same thing happens in case of the vn segment or bridge domain in case of it but from the configuration point of view just in order to avoid any kind of confusion I said bridge domain in VXLAN is the VN segment. Now, if you ask me a, add the difference, the difference is in case of VXLAN, where we do have the VN segment, we do a mapping, an explicit mapping in between the VLAN and the VLAN, I mean VLAN ID and VN ID. But in case of bridge domain configuration, where, which we do configure in ACI, this explicit mapping happens automatically. I really don't want to go deep dive into how it happens, but yes, that happens. Right? And of course, bridge domain gives us one common broadcast domain or all the endpoints connected to it. There are different in terms of, you know, the configuration, but when it comes to the concept, you can see the similarity in them as well. Okay, Ashish, thank you. So, my purpose of saying that, uh, my purpose of answering to Shekhar's question was not to confuse between the bridge domain, what you do configure in ACI with this particular bridge domain. Okay, all right, no worries. We have something beautiful in ACI, we will be learning it. There, yes, definitely you can take a match between them. All right, so we'll go further ahead. Terminologies we have already discussed. Now we are fine with the terminologies, the differentiation. All right, we extend terminologies once again. Why? Once again, we already know it and we will be using them. Okay. Okay, last part of our today's session is to understand the inside story of our VXLAN with the help of one of the Wireshark capture. We all know what is Wireshark. So, my first question to you, this is a Wireshark capture being taken to understand what kind of packet it is and what are the 
contents of this packet tomorrow we will take a deeper dive into those headers individual headers in this one and here there will be a question from here we can see that the originally this is our pink icmp means this is a communication packet between two and hosts and which is being captured by Vashak. Now, what are the components of it? The very first thing it is telling us it is an ICMP. Second thing, it is saying that this ICMP has got a source and has got a destination. Means when we are pinging, it was 10.0.0.11, which was trying to reach 10.0.0.12. All right. So then, of course, each and every node has got his own MAC address also. So that's called Ethernet header is being added over here. Then what? Then the encapsulation starts over here. This means ICMP, payload is ICMP, layer 3 IP is there, layer 2 addresses are there, and then it is encapsulated by VXLAN header. We will be looking at into the deeper of the organelle of this VXLAN header. Then it is prefixed by UDP header. UDP, if we take a look on, has got a source port 39965 and a destination port 4789. My dear friends, let me tell you that this particular port, this is a dynamic port, DYM. But this particular port is a static port. The moment, any time you happen to see, a port 4789, then you can immediately decide that this is our VXLAN traffic. VMware NSX network virtualization allows us to change this port number as well. But recommendation is do not change it. In case if this particular port number is blocked by the firewall, this means VXLAN tunnel will not come into the picture it will be blocked so this is the port but at the same time this arrangement of source port and destination port dub, dub, dynamic and static it provides us one beautiful functionality in vxman answer to which is suspense right this combination of a dynamic source port and a static destination port provides us, I repeat once again, a beautiful functionality inside the VXLAN and the answer is in suspense or you can say this is your homework question. Think of it. End of theory, I will explain you. But please do not forget the beautiful VIP number 4789, right? Four and then 789 in sequence. Then what? Then another header comes. It is again IP header followed by the Ethernet header. My dear friends, now we can divide the entire VXLAN packet into three different categories this is our internal this is i'm going to give a name soon this is our outer and what is this called this is called a shim what is a shim actually if you look at it to the dictionary meaning of shim, shim means any attachment. In simple, if you know there is a washer to connect 
two objects together to bind them strongly that particular component is called shim so vx lan is known as shim header that is one thing let me tell you this terminology shim is not the industry standard terminology for VXLAN, this terminology SHIM was used by Cisco, right? For the protocol called OTV, which does the same purpose. With better call, which used to do the same purpose, but not in that advanced way. So we continue to call this particular as the significant joiner of outer header headers and internal headers okay i want to pause over here do not intend to throw tons of information which can lead you to confusion tomorrow we are going to take a deeper dive into these with regards to the contents specifically of the vx lan header specifically with regards to its various fields and what specific bit in which specific field makes the header a real legitimate vxlan header right now this is what we will start from tomorrow but before that in case up till here if you have any doubt thank you so much first of all for bearing me continuously for one and a half plus all my new friends and old friends now question Said our session question minute session is now open because we will not be spending. Ashish, shall we see that uh, scenario uh, or we can see it uh, after this? Uh, Which scenario? The one after, after this after session, we will see. Okay, yeah, because I will be drawing it and then we can see. Okay. Any question? Amit Singh, Arun ES, Jasmine, Madhu, Marvin. What is the purpose of this internet? I mean, ICMP uh, uh, in this one? ICMP request? ICMP request. What's the full question? Yeah, I mean, what's doing in this, this place? I mean, ICMP. Uh, I don't get it uh, why we have this ICMP message uh, here. See, because two and hosts, one and host attempted to talk to another and host using ping, and this ping packet traversed through VXLAN network. Okay, that is a data packet. Okay, that's just a ping packet. Okay, okay. Yes, it is a ping packet. Okay. okay. So Mohan, Sharad, Sandeep, Kumar, Mr. Prime Minister, PM, huh? nice. Sean, Umair, and Vikram is always ready with questions. And Vikram with you, I'm going to sit. Okay. Thank you, uh, Fine, thank you, Mohan. Okay. Um, guys, if you have any question, you can definitely I'm sure you all of you are connected with me uh, my new friends all of you are connected with me on whatsapp if not then let me give you my number please make a note of it and do share your number my number is plus nine one double nine zero this is my number you can connect with me and also I would love to be connected with you on LinkedIn. So you can connect with me on LinkedIn also. Uh, you can easily find me uh, with the name of Ashish Sehgal. Let me write on my name over here. Right on the chat, you can see it. 
and would appreciate if uh, any one of you is not already connected to me or i do not have your number please do uh, give me your number you can type on the chat or you can better uh, type on the chat okay or you can ping me on the whatsapp as well all right thank you very much guys and uh, those who want to stay over here because we are going to have now more detailed discussion between me vikram and anyone who wants to participate having a uh, handsome knowledge on uh, nsx network virtualization using nsx you can continue rest those who are busy those who are done they can drop it's your choice no compulsion the meeting will continue over here okay with this as i said vikram are you ready yeah great of course do you want me to give you the control or want me to make you the presenter to draw the diagram no no go to the uh, uh, go to the diagram board we had the three uh, topologies right one is for uh, uh, overlay within host and one is for uh, okay I I sure vikram yeah that's that's where my question was right so it might be a simple question but uh, yeah i don't understand the mm. thing actually i also didn't understand your question fully uh problem understood is problem half solved so is this a diagram you're talking about correct, correct. so the hybrid one okay let's have this okay. like this right so okay uh, let me uh, move it to the slide mode so that i can easily draw if it is not on slide mode then there is a challenge okay okay um let it be like this right so um so for example we have this network overlay where uh, a packet is being sent from uh, bare metal through some vlan and uh, when it goes to the vtap that is your switch and it's uh, instead of uh, passing as in vlan it's it's doing an encapsulation correct so so within uh, switches it does an encapsulation so in in a overview so still i don't understand how it does it internally but i understand that in part so the same uh, host overlay same thing so but instead of uh, the switches does the encapsulation and decapsulation the uh, host that is nsx does it right so right then if we come to hybrid right so so, so again here uh, encapsulation considering uh, encapsulant decapsulant but but your picture right it's a bit, uh, a bit confusing but right so say so considering a vm is running on this uh, ho host right so it's sending a yeah it's sending a packet that is a uh, it's it's a um, it's connected to a vmi which is running on a nsx right let's consider a vmi some uh, 5000 or so right vmi 5000 that is configured on a nsx right so i'm sending a packet not within the same vmi but to a vlan right so okay uh, so how this picture uh, reflects that uh, use case, I mean, uh, a basic use case. Yeah. So um, I don't get that point, uh, Ashish. I got what you are saying. And to give you the complete details of it, you know what? I really have to take you to the lab. Okay. The complete integration, right? And will not be explaining, but I'll be showing you this. Uh, have what we have and those friends of ours who are still connected uh please do stay connected probably i missed to show you something about the lab the lab which we will be doing for the purpose okay here is the lab i'll just give you a glimpse of our configuration for the purpose of mapping in this lab okay not as part of task one 
uh, not as part of class two yes here when we will come over to configuring vxlan fabric now first of all take a look on the table right your question was with regards to a virtual machine right my pen should work okay a virtual machine which is connected to one specific vlan what uh, happens is this vni not the vlan because the yeah. picture that uh, showed is like it's a it's a vita and not the my VLAN friend, i'm coming uh, i'm coming to that i'm coming to that hold on hold okay. on okay first of all a virtual machine or a bare metal host is connected to a vlan this vlan what in configuration we do is we statically map this this is a layer 2 identifier isn't it yeah. so what we do is we statically map it to a another layer 2 identifier but for the purpose of vlan and that identifier is known as vnid this is known as vnid what for the purpose for the purpose of mapping layer 2 with layer 2 and this vnid is called layer 2 vnid there is another vnid that is called layer 3 vnid okay so every vlan id is statically mapped in our configuration with a corresponding layer 2 vnid which takes the virtual machine traffic into the vxlan tunnel right so this traffic now once encapsulated with layer 2 vnid will go inside the tunnel to be delivered at the destination endpoint wherein yes there will be a vnid and there will be a machine okay mm -mm -mm. okay now let me show you can you see something over here so it was supposed to be given to you in the day two class we do this static mapping this is the vlan and this vlan layer 2 vlan id is statically mapped to the layer 2 vn id before it you know i need to tell you one beautiful thing that is vxlan is capable of performing two activities as and when required one is bridging and other is routing and when I said as and when required, this means when two endpoints they are connected in the same layer two network, then VXLAN provides them bridging. In case if two endpoints are connected to two different networks, in case of our LAN segment, we call it inter VLAN communication. VXLAN provides us that as well inter vx lan communication that is nothing but that is called routing but prior to this i have to tell you so many other things we will come over to it later on vikram i really appreciate your curiosity mm, okay so but um who requests okay. you to maintain pay uh, no, no, no. Uh, just give me a control over the machine. I'll, I'll just tell you what I'm trying to. Uh, I mean, what I was saying, it's uh, within the uh, switch that is within the fabric you're saying, but uh, if you could hand over the uh, access, I can just, just uh, then a paint, I can just tell you what I'm trying to say. Uh, in the same diagram? Yeah, no, just a paint. Just a paint. Access? Just a paint, yeah, yeah. Just a paint. Uh, you can open a paint and just. Okay, you want the? Okay, I will make you the presenter. Where? Uh, where are you? Where are you? Okay, you name alphabetically is here, and uh, now you are the 
but uh, no if i make you presenter then you have to open your paint yeah i will open it i will open your paint and uh, you have the right form go ahead hold on a second uh when is it uh, auto meeting uh, i'm just searching where is the go to meeting look at in your yeah i mean done. i'm just it's uh, hold on a second i think it's uh, okay it's a browser it's a browser it's a browser So is it visible? My at least my second uh, this thing. No, is my it? friend, we cannot. Uh, it says yes. Now it's coming. Go. So just uh, right. you know, simple thing, right? So we have uh, this. Consider this as an hypervisor, and uh, consider this as an. Uh, so like this is a switch. Right, so just leave or something. So leave, leave. This is an uh, hypervisor, right? So, and uh, a VM is running on this. So consider a VM. So just a VM, from small VM. So, okay, fine. Okay, this is this is connected to a VMI. That is some file browser. So this is to connect it to a logical switch, right? So um, and then you have um, <clears throat> you have considering uh, I don't have uh, let's consider this connected directly to a edge that is still, uh, some some not open, right? So let's consider. So um, let's consider this connects to this and. Um, and uh, this connects to this. So what is this PV? Uh, that okay. is DLR. Edge, 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 not DLR. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not connecting to DLR. I'm just connecting this uh, VXLAN, right? VXLAN, that is VNI, whatever, the logical system. Are you talking about uh, NSX services mm -hmm. gateway, NSE? Edge, 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 edge. 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 Yeah, okay. Payload edge? Or gateway edge. Yeah, this is the, I'm I'm considering only one edge. I'm not having any uh, DLR in between. Okay. Just and this LS directly right. to okay. TV and uh, this is connecting in turn. Uh, like uh, say for example, we have a BGP pairing between these, two, right? So BGP. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Fine. So, so let's consider this VM five. I mean this VM has a VNI which sends a packet to a, a host. Uh, somewhere here, right? So, so let's have a host, uh, some bare metal. Right? That's what that's what uh, 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 um, the uh, the scenario is, right? So that's what the scenario is. So it goes. Um, okay. So let's consider bare metal. So bare metal. Um, or uh, no, this was a switch, right? This was a beta. You you were sending a packet to a switch. Uh, correct. Uh, VLAN to VLAN. Okay, VLAN one to... second. Let me read. So hybrid was having a hypervisor running here, and you are run. You are sending a packet uh, to uh, to to a switch which is running a VTAP. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So VTAP. 